This is Artifacts of Mars. wonder how many of you saw this uh, short video on YouTube about uh, ISIS plants their flag on a hill in, in Cobain, this small hill, and then next thing you know, a bomb comes and blows up the flag. Now, the media, and blows up a bunch of sand, the media is portraying this as some great military victory. And that denigrates our military. Now, I'm not, I'm not saying anything bad about our military because, you know, these people are doing what they're told. They're being told to blow up sand. This is a problem. This is not a military victory at all. Well, this is a photo op. This is also a psyop. The mighty ISIS being squashed by our bombs. All right, you want to talk about uh, some real military victories and fights? You see, this is bullshit, folks. We're not trying to defeat ISIS. We're blowing up sand. In a flag or two. Uh, it's not their flags that I'm afraid of. You want to talk about real military victories and stuff? Why don't we talk about uh, the Japanese attack on Midway Island on June 4th, uh, 1942. You want to talk about that? See, a wave of Japanese bombers uh, approached Midway Island. We know the story. We won the battle Midway. They approached Midway Island, and a man named Red Parks well, went out with 12 uh, planes, they resembled winged greenhouses, I don't know the, uh, nomenclature of the planes. They went up against 36 Japanese Zeros in these old antiquated planes. You'll never guess who won. Well, of course, you know, the Japanese won that part of it. Red Parks died. He died a hero's death. Don't none of you Christians ever suggest to me that uh, if he wasn't a born again Christian, he went to hell. Screw you. That'll piss me off even more. Than I'm already pissed off. Anyway, so Red Parks and his people died. Or in the same battle, you want to talk about uh, Commander Waldron? Tor torpedo Squadron 8 as it got slaughtered by Japanese fighters. You see, that was a real battle. This is not a battle that we're talking about here. We're not fighting ISIS. We have no intention of stopping them. Steering them, perhaps, but not stopping them. This is utter bullshit. Alright. This is pure psychological operation. You want to talk about the British and their attack on the Bismarck? You see, the Bismarck was one of the biggest, fattest, most powerful battle wagons ever devised. And got in a fight with the Hood and another ship in the British Navy, and Hood got, uh, got sunk. Hood lost fight. The Bismarck had taken a bad hit amidships. So, the British sent their planes after the Bismarck. You know what they sent after the Bismarck? These were antique. They are older even than the American planes that tried to defend Midway. These were antique, by-wing, uh, 
torpedo planes that they attacked them with. Well, they attacked the uh, Bismarck with. They were antiques, people. <laughs> they were essentially paper airplanes. Their wings were made out of paper. You think that didn't take fucking courage to attack that big monster sh uh, ship like that? Man, the British in those days, they were something else. They were, they were tough. They were beautiful. Now their country is choked with political correctness and trying to please all these blasted groups. They went at the Bismarck, and they managed to hit her three times. One of the torpedoes jammed up the ship's steering gear. And then the ship uh, finally got finished off later. I think they were called swordfish torpedo planes, if I'm not mistaken. I'd have to look it up. I don't have time right now. But they won. I mean, they got the Bismarck eventually. You see, that's real courage, and that's a real battle. And doing this to contrast what happened then with what's happening now. You want to talk about air power? I don't know how many of you realize this, but sometimes we were bombing shell Japanese held islands in the Pacific for days. They were not impressed. The Japanese simply hid in caverns and such and stayed away from the bombs. We had to go put boots on the ground. We had to go up to uh, some of these, uh, you know, caves. We used flamethrowers to drive the Japanese out, and then we machine gunned them as they came out. That's war, people. You see, that's a real battle. I forget which one of the battles it was. They lost, both sides ran out of ammunition. They wound up in a knife fight on a beach. I forget which island that was. It doesn't matter. The point here is, that's real battle. You know, uh, George C. Scott said it best in his patent monologue. Said something like, the billiest bastards who write this stuff about individuality from the Saturday Evening Post know about as much of it about real battle as they do about fornicating. Well, that's about the size of it. These douchebags in uh, the media have no idea what real battle is. They think we're winning victory after victory against ISIS. We're not. We don't intend to win it. Not with a Kenyan Muslim sitting in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. We're not going to try to win it. You know... You suburban women and men make me sick. You know what's going to happen when these sons of bitches get started? They get really started here. We've already had a number of attacks. We've had beheadings. We had the shooting up in Canada. And believe it or not, people are crediting Canada's gun laws rather than the person who shot the dirtbag dead. And we had a hatchet attack in New York City. These things add up. But you suburban white, white suburban uh, men and women, you make me sick. You go to your garden parties and stuff with your pristine houses and your uh, friendly friends. And you're completely oblivious to what the hell's going on. Many of you. Look what you put in the White House. A Kenyan muzzle. A Kenyan muzzle. I already said it. Obama is a Kenyan and a Muslim. They know this over in the Middle East. And you sons of bitches helped put that dirt bag in power. 
On the other hand, the instant I heard that he wanted a civilian security force as powerful and as well funded as our military, that was it. He got no more consideration from me because <laughs> I know my history and I know that's trouble. So he got booted from any chance of ever getting any support from me right there. I knew we were in trouble if he got in there. Now here's why you make me sick. You know, you go to all these fancy parties with your fancy friends, and you think you're safe, and you sit there and laugh at what's going on. Well, let me explain something. You're not going to be laughing anymore. You or your friends are s standing there, uh, and all of a sudden, little Miss Prissy has her head shot off. And you're covered with her blood. Yeah, you're, uh... You're gonna wake up. Only too late. These scum don't fool around. And they're coming. Make no mistake. Between them and Ebola, we're so fucked. And like I said, we have a Kenyan Muslim who's left our front door open, our back door, is allowing the scum to come into this country. Then we get these unhelpful uh, photo ops make us think that we're winning some great victory. So we blew up a flag. Not fucking impressed. I am sorry. Uh... You want to talk about flags being blown up? You want to talk about the USS Hornet being sunk in the Battle of Saville Island? This is incredible. These people make me sick. You white suburban people, you don't put the slime in office that, uh, is actually encouraging this. I got nothing but contempt for you. Romney, for instance, would have been infinitely preferable to this, uh, slime. I think McCain probably would have been about the same, but Romney would have been a little better, I think. Well, it's said and done. Um, you people have no grip on reality. You know what they're going to do to your daughters? They're going to take them, you know, your pristine little daughters and their cheerleader outfits. Oh, she looks so great. She's a cheerleader. They're going to take those girls and they're going to sell them as sex slaves to... Some big fat Arab chic slob. They don't believe that women should have any rights whatsoever. And they're common. Now, they're not going to beat us in a straight fight. You have to understand that. But uh, we're being weakened with disease. Disease is spreading, probably Ebola. There's r reports out there that maybe Ebola is spreading through well, some of the population now of the United States. And they're bringing other diseases in as well. When we get weakened by Ebola, then they won't have to take us on a straight fight. This is the thing. That's one of the uh, military tactics that uh, have been envisioned. It wouldn't have to be Ebola either. It's supposed to be a type of virus that they could give us that could be triggered by an event. You give, give the population the virus and then it gets trigger, triggered by some event. There's a name for it, I can't recall it. And then, you know, it basically takes the population down. Think we can be taken? Hogwash. These come have major state sponsorship. 
we got to identify their state sponsors and basically kick the snot out of them. I mean, what the hell are our nukes for if we're not going to use them? This is all, this is all fucking bullshit, alright? It's pure, unadulterated bullshit. You want to talk about a real battle? You want to talk about Admiral Crease and his cruisers, how they successfully evaded Japanese planes during the Battle of the Coral Sea? And how that incident spooked the Japanese into retreating? Admiral Inuyai moved his transports away from uh, New Guinea. They're trying to take Papua New Guinea and as preparation to taking the Australian mainland. And when Admiral Crace was leading a uh, small fleet of cruisers, they got bombed by the Japanese, and somehow we managed to evade their bombs. I guess they weren't terribly accurate either. See, that's real courage. That's a real battle. This is bullshit. Or you want to talk about uh, our uh, people sinking the show hole, which is the light carrier is supposed to be providing air cover for the transports. It just goes on and on. This is not real battle. This is not a war. We're not fighting ISIS. Steering them, perhaps, but not fighting them. They're not impressed with their bombs. They're just hiding. This is why I said, use a neutron bomb on them. <laughs> you can't hide from that. But we have no intention of defeating them. And I'm sure the media will continue putting out stupid photo ops like this. This is just beyond belief. This is total disinformation. This is utter hogwash. You people are being lied to. We're all being lied to. I'm disgusted. I'm Artifacts of Mars. Wake the fuck up, people. You're in so much danger. If you don't do something for anyone else, do it for Commander Waldron. Or Red Parks. People who are real heroes. Gave up their lives. So that you, we could have this discussion. And now you have a tin horn. Ugh. At 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue. I gotta watch my language. The artifacts of Mars.